Hey guys, this is Paolo with Meditation Amsterdam. And today I'll do a very short video about the topic of how desire makes you feel isolated. And uh, this can be more clearly seen when we have the desire to be with perhaps another person. And if you think these are interesting topics and the video is helpful, do subscribe and like. And let's get into it straight away. So the... Um, the topic of desire uh, has been discussed in the channel uh, a few times and usually I take the angle of desire being um, kind of a move away from the now so you're looking towards the future, you're not accepting the now as it is, uh, all this kind of business or how desire um, is a kind of protective layer that prevents you from feeling a fear that is hidden behind a desire. So all those are valid angles that um, that are still at play when it comes to the, the the topic of desire. So desire is seen as perhaps the the really the bad guy or or one of the the primary uh, culprits of our lap, lack of happiness in um, in some of these Eastern philosophies that we discuss. Um, <clears throat> but today I wanted to take a, a slightly different angle, and it um, it plays upon uh, some of the uh, developmental uh, psychology topics that I've also been uh, mentioning in the past. So um, the, the original state of the, uh, of the infant, uh, which I've also uh, mentioned before, is one of uh, mind at large. It's complete, um, it's a mind that is whole and wholesome. It has no divisions within it. It doesn't distinguish objects, but most importantly, it also doesn't distinguish itself from another. So the the, the sense of self has not developed yet. Um, there's a theory that says that uh, that mother's loving gaze um, is the thing that instills in the baby the sense that there is an other that is looking at at a at a certain me. And, and that creates the first rift in the mind or this big division from which we rarely ever uh, recover. Because from that point on, it becomes clear that you are a separate self. And now you feel uh, isolated in the world. And what I would like to uh, submit to you is that desire is such an uncomfortable feeling uh, not only because there is a, um, a separation from the now and lack of acceptance of what is and lack of unconditional love, which was my previous video, all that good stuff, but because it is a, uh, a replica or it replicates the isolation of that core wound that we carry. In other words, it is impossible to the desire another without making, into an, making them into an other and therefore making ourselves into a separate self, which is the isolation, the primary feeling of isolation comes from being a separate self. So, <clears throat> so desire is much more painful than we, uh, than we like to admit, as a matter of fact, or that, or that we realize before we start to do the work of self-cultivation that we are not sensitive to what's taking place. What's taking place when we make ourselves into a self and create a polarity of self and other is that we replicate the feelings of isolation that we felt the very first time we felt as a self in the world, which is a terrifying and incredibly isolating and, um, and um, very distressful uh, mode of mind. It is in fact the very opposite of feeling wholesome and, and, and feeling uh, safe and loved and free. Uh, which is why the work of cultivation um, is done. And it, it takes you into a vehicle in which you uh, learn to see the unwholesomeness of desire. Um, very often uh, we hear in, in Buddhism, but also in, in, in um, monotheistic religions, religions that desire is a bad thing, that we should be trying to exercise desirelessness. But that's impossible because so long as you uh, feel like a self, you will have desires. So the feeling of isolation breeds otherness in your surroundings and desire for, for, um, for those others or certain other things. Um, and at the same time, desire for other things 
perpetuates the feeling of being a separate self and therefore being isolated. So it's a, uh, a perpetuous um, or, and self-perpetuating uh, cycle of, of unhappiness, essentially, right? Of, of suffering, what, what the Buddha would call suffering. Um, and so the, <clears throat> the work of self-cultivation, the work that we, that we do in, uh, in, in, in Buddhism or meditative practices and so on, is the work of clarifying the relationship between our mind darting outside, projecting um, a, a sense of separation versus another uh, under the guise of desire, and in, the, and in that movement, creating or making a separate, isolated, lonely and scared self out of our, uh, out of our being, out of ourselves. So um, once, that, once that dynamic is understood and, and harped upon and meditated upon and clarified, desire as a vehicle to feel okay with ourselves starts to become, um, you naturally start to um, go away from that mode of mind because the pain that it brings starts to become really, really clear. Now, there may be an interim period in which you still have old tendencies of going out there and, and, and trying to make desire that vehicle that is supposed to satisfy if you only get what you want. But as time goes by, um, you start to, number one, experience uh, windows of desirelessness. And you also start to experience uh, much more clearly the pain that you cause yourself by that movement outside of yourself and that polarization of self and other and those feelings of isolation that are um, uh, so detrimental to, to, to our happiness and our well-being. So, um, so this is yet another angle on, on, uh, on the topic of desire. Um, it doesn't negate uh, some of the other um, uh, angles out there. And, uh, but it does inform, on the one hand, the, the idea that going directly after desirelessness is not very feasible, uh, that, that the task is really to clarify the dynamic and get to feel firsthand and quite clearly what happens when the mind goes out and makes uh, something in the periphery into an other, and by that very token makes you into an, an isolated self. And once that dynamic, once that polarity is established, uh, whether you get what you want or not is, is beside the point. You've already made yourself into an isolated self. And that is um, the core wound that you carry to begin with. So you're just hurting yourself over and over again by, by doing that, as opposed to um, turning inward, bringing your attention into the self, um, feeling wholesome and, and not playing these games of going outside and splitting your, uh, your, your consciousness into self and other because that is the very wound that you are um, attempting to heal. So I hope that makes sense and I'll be back with more content as usual. Cheerio.